this week. When Rod called us and said, hey, why don't you guys come down here? I think we can really put you on a lot of these little birds. We thought it would be a great opportunity, and it would give us something different that we could do in September other than just going up to Prairie County. A lot of us, when we think about going down to the Mississippi Delta, we think about waterfowling and all the great mallard hunting that's down there and, you know, the writings of folks like Nash Buckingham. We also think about an area of the country where cotton was once king and where catfish farming has really come on in the latter part of the 20th century. And of course, you can't talk about the Mississippi Delta without also talking about great folks like B.B. King because it is the birthplace of the blues. Last year on our maiden voyage around the Migration Nation, we met some really neat people and we had some great hunts. But by the end of the season, we were pretty worn out and we were glad for it to be over with. But it only took a few months of setting at home and, you know, sweating it out in the heat of the summer out there working with the dogs before we realized, boy, waterfowl season can't get here quick enough. You know, it really hadn't been that bad a drive only four or five hours from home, and we finally made it down here to Rod's camp. I'd gotten a call during the summer from a good friend of mine, Mr. Rod Vies. Rod hunts almost every single day of the blue wing till season. So when Rod called us and said, hey, why don't you guys come down here? I think we can really put you on a lot of these little birds. We thought it would be a great opportunity, and it would give us something different that we could do in September, other than just going up to Prairie, Canada. finally made our way in there and Rod had arranged for us to stay at David Ford's lot. David Ford. Hey. J. Paul Jackson. Hey, Pleasure nice to meet you, David. You. Welcome. David Glad to have you. Now, David and Rod have been friends for several years, but this was our first opportunity to get to meet David. He brought us in, told us to treat the place like it was home, and he gave us that same warm southern welcome that we'd received everywhere that we'd been so far down there in the south. After we got tucked away in the lodge, we started to talk to Rod for just a little bit about what we were going to be doing and about where we were going to be hunting. I was talking to Jay Janice on the way up here. He he's got a he's bunch of tail, too. too. He's got a pile of He's probably got more than we do. Really? Yeah. He said you had more than he does. Uh, so that's we, we both got a lot of tail. Yeah, it's going to be a good hunt, I think. So it should be good. After just a few minutes, it struck us that Rod had put a lot of work into finding the birds for us and developing a game plan for our three-day hunt. BP set aside several million dollars to pump up these ponds and provide habitat for migratory waterfowl. Drake's Migration Nation is brought to you by McAllister, sporting apparel and accessories, rutware, non-typical gear, Old Tom, technical turkey gear, Huntley, American ingenuity worth the price, real ammunition since 1896, Express, the original all-welded boat, and by Drake Waterfowl Systems, innovators in waterfowl hunting. We've got mosquitoes like you wouldn't believe here. 
You may remember that during the summer of 2010, we had a catastrophe in the Gulf where billions of gallons of crude oil spilled right out into the Gulf of Mexico. There was a lot of concern among biologists and other people about how this was going to impact waterfowling and the brackish water estuaries, the places that ducks go when they reach that Gulf region and spend their winter time. Because of this, BP set aside several million dollars to help offset the impact that this oil spill might have on waterfowl in the region, and the Migratory Bird Habitat Initiative was born. What's causing all these birds to come into this particular area right now? We got this place on a government program, and uh, it's just a condition of uh, the ponds, you know, that, that shallow water. Mm -hmm. They're just coming in here and feeding, they're hanging in here, been here for about a month now. This Migratory Bird Habitat Initiative paid the farmers to pump up these ponds and provide habitat for migratory waterfowl. BP is paying for this government program. Oh man, it's working too. <laughs> Keep that bird water said we had something like 30 different types of waterfowl out here. That's fantastic. There's birds out here that's not supposed to be here. We got pink birds out here. <laughs> <laughs> We've got all this new habitat that was going to be down there. It made the trip really exciting and we felt like we were fixing to go into something that was going to be really, really good. I believe it's going to be a good morning. Feels like fall out here. Shot, Rams. I'm going to slow something on my There we go. Right here. Sit. 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 Going out and hunting these blue winged teal, particularly in September when there's still farmers in the field, that's kind of out of the box or out of the norm. For us down here in the south, usually the blue winged teal season will start somewhere around the first or second week of September and it'll run anywhere from three or four days to in some places like down in Mississippi up to a week or ten days. But Rod and these guys, I mean, they have what it takes and they go the extra distance to be successful here and they really hit the blue wings hard. Here we come, straight at us, straight at us, right behind her. Good shot. Mud's tough on her. You can see her go in there hard, but she slows down quick. Take it tough on her, Jake Paul. Walk out there. <laughs> <laughs> see how tough it is on us. Sit. Good shot, guys. Ella! That's nice. This, this morning we're halfway through a limit, and uh, all we've shot is adult birds. Adult birds are these blue wings. They're, they're, they are a photo period migrator. They come down early. That's why you can set the season at the late last half of September, Mississippi every year. And uh, but but I, I really like to look at these birds' wings when we when we're shooting them because I'm looking for the for where where are we in the migration. As you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we may have to do this story here in just well, a few minutes. Yeah. Like we're done on birds. I just no, miss you. Man, that was good stuff, Ramsey. I was impressed as can be. That was great stuff right up until the point where somebody said, shoot them and interrupted you. Sit. <laughs> Ramsey is a really interesting character. He's a wildlife biologist. And he and his wife also own and operate GetDucks.com. Blue winged teal migrate like clockwork. Uh, they're, they're a photo period migrator. As the days get shorter, they bail on Canada and fly south. We've got the perfect habitat down here. Here we go. Come here, baby. 
heel. Leave it. Sit. Man. Now I may have to take that one home to mound. Get him. Get him. Heel. 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 Sit. Sit. Leave it. Thanks, baby. Good girl. Shot, man. Yeah. That's all we needed. We're done here. Ella! That first morning, we all had the excitement like it was opening day of the regular duck season because for us, it was the first hunt of the year. On the second day, we were going to go out and hunt with Bill and Jay Janice. The thing about hunting blue wing teal, and particularly in Mississippi, is that you're doing it in September, and it's going to be hot. With it being the early season, it's hot out here. Just like yesterday, it's only about 60 degrees today, but according to the weatherman, it's going to get to 96. So I brought out the breathable boat pants this morning. It's just way too hot for traditional neoprene waders. And these things, uh, they're made to breathe. So you better have a set, otherwise you're going to burn up. See three on the right, let's cut them. See three on the right, let's cut them. Right here, right here. Good shot. This hunt was really a joint effort. While we sat back having a good time, we rotated between the shooters and everybody got to take their turn shooting. As it got to be toward the end of the hunt, we realized that everybody had killed their limit of birds except for Bill. Bill only had three blue wings, so he needed one more. And that is a limit. <laughs> 725, and we needed one more bird. And Bill just took our last till, so we've had another great shoot this morning down here around Belzona, Mississippi. Wonderful time with you, buddy. That's Thank a good you, shot, too. Thank yeah, you, man. Thank you. After we ended the hunt there on that second morning, it was still really early in the day. The weather was perfect, if a little bit hot, and we thought that would be a good time to go exploring around the B.B. King Blues Museum. Thank you very much. We'll go ahead and get you started on your tour. Thank you. Thanks, Laura.
that was pretty, pretty interesting, pretty cool, stopping by the museum and meeting the staff and learning a little bit more about B.B. King's life and about the area that we were in. Man, this is what I'm talking about. Right here at the B.B. King Museum, the home of the blues in the Mississippi Delta. Drake's Migration Nation has been brought to you by McAllister, Sporting Apparel and Accessories, Rutwear, Non-Typical Gear, Old Tom, Technical Turkey Gear, Huntley, American Ingenuity, Worth the Price, Rio Ammunition, Since 1896, Express, The Original All-Welded Boat, and by Drake Waterfowl Systems, Innovators in Waterfowl Hunting. On the third day, we got to go hunt with Jimmy Barton, one of Drake's field experts. And Jimmy took us to a little pond that he's been hunting for several years during till season. Jimmy, we've moved a little bit over from the area around Sunflower where we're hunting. Where are we at this morning? We're right on the Sunflower River near uh, Hollandale, Mississippi, uh, in between Hollandale and Bells on us, uh, old catfish ponds. Mm -hmm. So once again, we're out here in these catfish ponds. Now, is this an active catfish farm, or is this one that just has water under the program to try to slow the ducks down? It's actually a transition phase between catfish farming and it's going to be converted to row crop. And the water's all anywhere from knee deep to ankle deep, so it's perfect for teal. We actually took eight hunters to the field on that third morning. We spread everybody up and down the pond levee where everybody could know the birds that they'd taken and we could keep a good, accurate count on who'd gotten what. And uh, Jimmy, he showed that he too, like Rod, knew what he was doing. We just got a couple thousand ducks off the pond here beside us. So that's the way to do it, right there. Oh! One coming right in the decoys. Right in the decoys. Good. Good job. Good shot. Oh! <laughs> All right! Nice job, guys. That's solid shooting. We got four out of that group. That's some shit. Somebody whacked down on them. Right here from left. From left. From left. Do it. See it. Right here to the right. Come, keep coming. Come, keep coming. Keep shooting. Good shot. Good shot. Busking. Busking. That closes out our eight limits duck today. We've had three days of excellent shooting on these blue wing teal here in Mississippi. We've learned a lot about the Delta and the culture of the area. If, if you're a duck hunter 24 seven, you're thinking waterfowl. When you're at work, you're thinking duck season. When, you, when you're at home, you're thinking going to hunting camp. It's duck season all the time, you know, in, in, a, in a real duck hunter's heart. The migration nation to me, uh, we've got long season. You start in Canada, you finish in Louisiana. East Coast or West Coast, boy, we've got, we're blessed in the USA with, with a long duck season. And that's what it really means to me is, is, is maximum opportunity to enjoy the resource and enjoy this, this tradition that we all, we all love so much. That week was a great way to kick off the 2010 hunting season for us. We got to learn a whole lot about how to do this blue wing till hunting. And let me tell you, 
It's a lot of work going out there, scouting these birds, finding where they want to be. Hey, it's tough, and you've got to be willing to go the distance if you're going to be successful. But we also found out that if you're willing to put in the time and the effort, it can be one of the most rewarding waterfowl hunts there is. Best of all, while hunting with these guys, we also realized we'd made some new friends and we'd got to see one of the most interesting parts of the Migration Nation. Want to join the Migration Nation? Go to drakesmigrationnation.com to find out how.